today I want to talk about birth plan do's and don'ts. There's so much today about planning the perfect birth. This is virtually impossible to do. And in my opinion, as long as your baby comes out very healthy and you're healthy too, it was the perfect birth. But I do totally understand wanting to create an environment that is most conducive to you relaxing and helping you labor. Now what I like to do is call it a birth strategy instead of a birth plan because that allows you to be a little bit more flexible if it doesn't go exactly according to plan. So when you're coming up with your birth strategy, make sure to discuss it with your doctor and with your midwife and with your doula so you make sure everybody's on the same page. Okay, now let's talk about some do's and don'ts. What can you bring into the delivery room to help your delivery? A lot of people want to bring different things into the delivery room to help them through. Things like music can be a really great idea. I would just suggest bringing a variety of different types of music because if you bring one genre, it may turn out not to be the genre you're looking for. Now, no joke, I thought I would like Justin Timberlake's Sexy Back. I don't know why. It made me feel good at the time. It did not make me feel good in labor. So you might want to have some alternative types of music in case you're feeling in a different mood. When it comes to things like candles, which I know can be relaxing for some people, you're going to have to consider that an open flame is probably not what your hospital has in mind. So maybe consider something that's battery powered or maybe some oils or other ways to calm your senses. What can you do in terms of beauty and appearance and why? Now, it wasn't so long ago that people thought I was crazy for wanting to have my hair blow dried and my makeup done before I went into labor. But I gotta tell you, a few years have passed now and everybody's doing it and I think it's great. I think there's nothing wrong with wanting to look good in all those pictures you're gonna have taken and I'm gonna be sharing out on social media to millions of people after you've given birth. So if you wanna do a little personal grooming in your hair, or even downstairs, then go for it. But remember, no jewels in the lady town. It's not conducive to delivery. How many people can you bring into the delivery room and can you bring kids? You may have this great idea of having a team around you to support you during delivery. And that's a really great idea, except most hospitals don't allow a team in the delivery room. Most hospitals only allow two additional people on top of the medical staff that are gonna be in your room. You're gonna wanna check with your hospital. When it comes to children, most hospitals don't allow children to be in the room, so you're going to need to talk to your hospital if you need to make childcare arrangements. Can you eat your placenta? Now this actually comes up more times than you may think. The idea of eating the placenta has really taken off. Now the truth is you can eat your placenta, raw, cooked, or encapsulated. A lot of people are going for encapsulated, but it's your choice. There has been no medical study done as of yet to indicate that eating your placenta is actually helpful or beneficial to your health. However, there are plenty of anecdotal stories to say that eating the placenta can ward off against postpartum depression, help your recovery, and even reduce the symptoms of menopause. So, if you're interested, investigate further. What about breastfeeding right after delivery? You should be able to breastfeed right after you've delivered your baby. Most hospitals now will let you put your baby right on top of your body, skin on skin, and begin breastfeeding almost immediately. There are a few exceptions to this, of course, depending on a medical situation or if you've had a C-section. But you should discuss this one with your doctor. When should you clamp the umbilical cord? We know that delayed cord clamping can really benefit the baby when you wait for up to one minute after delivery. Much more than that doesn't appear to be any more beneficial. Most of all, remember that you know yourself best. So when you're coming up with your birth strategy and thinking about the things that are going to help you relax and get through your delivery the best way you can, think about what will help you rather than what helps other people. You know, a wise woman once told me that she noticed that I am most relaxed and most focused when I am responding to all my emails and clearing my inbox. And I took her advice to heart. So in delivery, instead of getting massages and having beautiful fragrances and music, I actually tried emailing. And it helped me. Crazy, I know, but it helped me. I'm not saying it helped you. But I realized I needed to look inwards at what made me relaxed and focused. So try to think what you think would help you in delivery as opposed to what seems to be helping everybody else. Follow me at Rosie Pope for more useful information or go to rosiepope.com. And if you have ideas for videos you want me to make, just let me know.